Welcome to Bound by Books. I am one of your hosts, writer Danielle Bannister, and I'm joined today by Sherry Hayes as we talk about all the things that we love here on Bound by Books. Welcome, Sherry. Hey, Danielle. How are you today? I just got done uh, shoveling a, you know, a foot of snow in the epic blizzard that we had here in the Northeast. So I'm exhausted. Yeah. That's what I am. So yeah, you guys got a lot of snow up there in Maine. Bit, just a little bit, but you know, lot, January and lot. February, that's when we really get hit. So it really shouldn't be a surprise. And yet every year we grumble. <laughs> well, you hope you, every year you cross your fingers and you go, let's just hope I don't have to shovel like the mild 10 year. feet of snow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It, it's. And yeah, I hear you, you get ice you coming your way soon. Well, they're saying it's a possibility. We are, we're, I guess, kind of on a line where yep. it, we, we're going to get rain mm -hmm. and they think it's going to transition into snow. And in that meantime period, we're going to get some ice, but you never know. I never mean, a dull moment, <sighs> never a dull moment in the winter. Not right? in January and February. It's not, not in the North. It's not dull. You never know. Of course, the South apparently isn't, isn't protected either because oh, yeah. they got like almost a foot of snow in yeah. like North Carolina. I'm yeah. like, what Florida's the heck? cold. Yeah. So oh. it's, uh, everybody, uh, it, winter is coming apparently to everybody so oh yeah winter Buckle winter in. is not <laughs> taking any prisoners this no. uh this year that's Should we expect for sure any less though given the you know the, the years that the wackiness that has been recently. the last two years i mean come yeah. on we we really, really should not be surprised at no all. not not really well speaking of a little wacky we're going to dive in today um to sex let's talk about sex i won't uh, say, sorry <laughs> and um we're going to approach this kind of uh more from a writer's perspective so we're going to be talking a lot about uh writing sex um, the craft in general uh and the elements that go into writing a sex scene a good sex scene um especially in romance but keep in mind that romance is not the only genre that tackles sex. Not at all. I just finished reading um, Written in His Own Heart's Blood by Diana Gabaldon. Oh, you uh, finished it? Oh my God. I, have I did. I, I, I'm way, I'm <laughs> it took me on two months, five. but I finished it. I got yeah. it. Um, yes. And uh, so, and there's some pretty steamy scenes in that book and that series yep. so and that is I mean that is not I mean yeah that does not really qualify as romance there's definitely a romantic thread in it obviously historical romance but it's definitely a but, bit more history but also time travel-y so it's what it's historical it? fantasy is yeah. what they classify that it was as historical it. fantasy I bet they created that so, genre just for her books probably <laughs> Probably because I don't know that many historical oh. fantasy books that are out there outside of Outlander. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but even even thrillers. Oh, uh, absolutely. There are some there Paranormal. are some thrillers that have some oh, hot yeah. sex scenes in them. Yeah. So romance is not the only genre that tackles yeah. this, but yeah. but it does tackle it, I think, a little more than on average then it's a little bit more expecting i think in the romance right genre. right it's not, then it's not again, unheard of but no no but then again it does depend on what genre what sub genre yeah. sub genre i can't talk today it's all right either sub genre of romance that yeah. you're talking about because if you are writing sweet yep. romance mm -hmm. there is no sex at all nope none there's no hint of sex there's no fade to black it just is like if they hold hands and kiss that's pretty much the line of that um now you have a couple of sweets correct yeah well, if, if we're going with a hard line of just a you know a kiss and a handhold Probably the the sweet romance would be uh, my young adult. So that's that's as mm. far as they go. There's um, 
in my later in life series, Doppelganger, Must Love Coffee, Taking Stock, um, there is um, hints to the act and innuendo to it, but we don't, the lights are not fully up. We don't get to see sort of, you know, what, what goes on when we close the bedroom door. Um, right. So if, and there's, there's readers for, for right. all types. Of oh yeah. Romance. Oh, for sure. Show and for then sure. I have so books you... that are, you know, let's have right. the lights on and see everything. So yeah. 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 Now, so would you consider those to be more sensual? So they would fall into the steamy category since you're, you're not really, you don't really see it, but you have obviously some leading up to it. I would not consider the ones like the doppelganger must love coffee taking stock. I wouldn't consider those steamy. I would consider those just plain romance because there is it's it's okay. more about the 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 build up romance of the connection of these the emotional connection of these characters mm. versus the sexual tension necessarily. Mm. It's more of them coming together and discovering that that, that there might be a connection between here versus let's have some you know yeah, yeah. Moments. Okay, so that that brings up a really good kind of dichotomy as to the classifications of different subgenres of romance when it comes to steam level. Mm-hmm. To me, when I'm reading, I'm thinking, you know, sweet. Obviously, like I said, I'm I'm not expecting anything right. beyond some hand holding and maybe a kiss or two but it's definitely focused on the relationship and the outside events that are happening that the characters are dealing with right. uh, that kind of usually propel the relationship forward. So they're, they're tackling some sort of a, uh, an obstacle um, and, you know, that's prop- helping to propel the relationship. Um, steamy, like I said, I, I think of that more as a sensual thing. Do, would you agree? Sure. Like, um, I think some whereas, readers who are thinking about steamy might think, oh, there, there, there's going to be at least a sex scene with steamy. For me, that's what steamy yes. is to me. That there's at least one right. sex scene. It's I not, would say it's not yes. the main part of the story, but we definitely- But I also don't think it's explicit. It's not it explicit need to be. either. No, I don't think it needs no, to be, but I, I think I there's would, definitely sexual tension that yeah. involved. Oh yeah, definitely sexual tension. And I would, I would say, yes, there, there can be sex on the page, but mm-hmm. I would view steamy as more in a, as what we would call an emotional mm-hmm. sex scene versus an explicit sex scene. Huh. Like it's, you know, more of a, they, you know, the emotional connection and them coming together physically for you know as a culmination of their emotional feelings oh. versus the focus on this the actual physical act right right so then right? then the difference then for you what would the difference then for you be between a, a spicy book mm-hmm. versus an erotic book now for me a spicy book would be multiple sex scenes but we still have a good we could still have a good plot involved where for me, erotic, yeah. uh, erotic is more, the sex is more the front burner and the plot is sort of the back burner. But how do you define it? So for me, spicy is pretty much, I would qualify as the same as a steamy, except the sex scenes are more graphic. Okay. So whereas the steamy is more of an emotional sex scene and you, pro- and you have no more than three of them in a, in a book. But you're you're definitely going to be focusing more on the emotion, the touches, this and that, and the other versus you know the mechanics he put, of that. <laughs> he the mechanics. <laughs> We're going to try to keep this not X-rated here today. Try not um, to get banned and blocked. <laughs> which I don't know if it's going to happen because we are reading excerpts later. So um, you I know my I know mine. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. mine PG might get us in trouble too. Um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, but with spicy, I would, I would say it, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. You would not get into, I would say four sex scenes max in a full length novel. More likely three, and it is going to be fairly detailed. Mm-hmm. Is you know as to 
the mechanics. You're still going to obviously have the emotional part of it too, but the mechanics are definitely drawn out in more detail uh, as a, you know, blow by blow, I'd say, uh, as far as pun intended there. Um, and then erotic romance me is going to just jack it up a notch from this from the spicy where the sex scenes are not only more plentiful mm. but they tend to play an intricate part in the storyline itself whereas you really can't even though they may not be the driving force of the story, which I think is sex driving the driving force in the story is what pushes it over the edge to erotica. Right. Because erotica is the sex is the, you know, the plot of the story, like a sexual awakening, a sexual exploration. It's not the relationship between the characters, you know, a blossoming romance. It is the sexual experience itself that does. Whereas erotic romance literally is a marriage between erotica and the spicy where you 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 have the spicies kicked up a notch you tend to have an unlimited really amount of sex scenes the plot is still the 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 characters getting together is still the driving force and it is it tends to be extremely graphic however you can't take out the sex for a perfect example with my not with my story that I'm going to read an excerpt from today Mm -hmm. um they're they're exploring a relationship but it's a BDSM relationship he's an experienced dominant she has literally no experience in the lifestyle whatsoever so them exploring the lifestyle together exploring the kinky sex together yeah is part of the evolution of the relationship. Right. So it becomes an intricate part. So you can't really take the sex out and have the story still have the same weight. Right. Does that make right. sense? Or yeah, it, it does. But here's the thing there, there's like no like like complete <laughs> definitions of this anywhere. You know, like when you're going to upload no. your book, it doesn't say erotica and these this is what de- defines erotica or this is you know you sort of well, have to try to figure yes it and out. no because amazon does well, define yeah. erotica. <laughs> i was gonna say the, the yes they actually can point out erotica and if you you know mention that you have erotica or say that it's adult content you're kind of thrown in sort of that jail if you will so it the makes it really dungeon. difficult it makes it really mm-hmm. difficult if you're writing in those categories to actually be able to market your book because you're not going to be able to get ads for them. They're going to flag your content. You're not going to you're not going to be seen in the same way. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's something to consider if you're writing that to, to make sure that you you have other ways to reach your customers that don't necessarily involve ads or so building a newsletter, for example, yes. that sort of thing to, to work around that so you can find your audience and make sure that they get get the content that you have available for them. Exactly, exactly. So, but I would say be conscious of what type of level of sexual steam, spiciness you have in your novel. Because even though there is a little bit of a leeway into what is considered sweet, spicy, steamy, erotic, you know, erotic romance, there are basic guidelines that are expected and a within great the reader thing, community, the reader, right. Community within the reader community. Right. So right. as an author, so, it behooves you to know. Yeah. So that's one of the thing, reasons why you should really read in your genre uh, or at least read in your heat level to know what is expected because, you know, you don't want to market something as a steamy romance and you're actually reading, writing an erotic romance. Yeah, that would not go over very well. Readers right. will not be happy, and you'll get a bunch of one star reviews. <laughs> well, and the same, the same breath saying that it's steamy and actually it's really sweet. Yeah, you, oh, you yeah. might yeah. think that it's steamy for you personally. It might be a steamy thing, but mm-hmm. you know, steamy readers come in expecting a certain a certain level of something something, and if you don't, yeah, I mean, they they, they want something. If you're not giving them an actual sex scene, it better have some serious chemistry and, you know, sensual things going on and, and not just hand-holding and kissing. 
<laughs> and a peck on the cheek. That would right. not, yeah, that would not right. go over very right. well. So reader expectations are really important when you're researching yeah. uh, your story. Now, talking about kind of the, <laughs> the steam level and the steam things, one of the, one of the greatest parts of writing a love scene hmm. is the lead up, oh. the foreplay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think <laughs> if you don't have that, if you don't have that foreplay, you know, how are you going to have your characters sort of reach their climax? Right. And so the reader yeah. wants to go on that journey with you. <laughs> so yeah. Well, it's yeah. going to be a very short sex scene too, if there's no foreplay, because right. you know, there's only so much in and out, in and out, in and out that you can do on a page before, you know, there's only so things gotta you happen. Write that before it's the same phrasing, right? So the foreplay yeah. allows you to tease that out as well as tease your character and tease the reader and hopefully, you know, bring them to that moment with you. Um, you know, I've had readers before saying they needed some alone time after reading scenes for and if they do you know what I've done my job right I've I've done yeah. my job that's what I actually we're here I for. actually had an author uh I bet I met her in uh, at, a, at a conference years ago and we were just standing around chatting at one of the parties and stuff like that and she I said so what do you write she goes I write one-handed reading <laughs> <laughs> that's a Good description for it. That is a good She was very upfront about that. That is a um, good description. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there really is something for everybody. Um, right. But, yeah, just foreplay really does have a, an integral part yeah. into things because without it, it really makes it very dull. And sexy. Here's, here's the other thing I think also about foreplay is that it can also, you know, be things that aren't actual sex you can have intimate oh, yeah. moments that don't actually lead to physical penetration i mean you can shake up your sex scenes by not showing them having actual in out in out you know moments it, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to all be the same thing right so you can, no you can explore no and i i get to explore that a lot with my bdsm I, I can imagine that you will, and I cannot wait for the excerpt because I've been uh, been curious mm. to see what you've been working on. <laughs> yes, yes. Miss Danielle has read, you've read one of my books, right? I read Slave, yep. I read Slave. Right, but that's my one and only book right, that, that does have not have sex, have in, it, right. sex in it. I have another one of yours on my list for this year, but now, I, of course, I... I think it's Burning one. for Her Kiss. That sounds right, one. that sounds right. Um, my femdom novel. Yeah. So, you know, why, I, it's on my list of reads for this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tackle that one. I've got some alien sex with uh, Latina Moss up next. So again, yes, aliens and sex. I mean, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So I'm kind of curious how she tackles foreplay. I, th why I'm reading it. I want to see what she's doing. Because I'm like, you know, we can yeah. always be learning. We can oh, yeah. always be learning. Yeah. Like I said, it, it's it really does behoove authors to make sure they're reading, if not in their specific genre, which I still think I know some authors don't like to read in their genres because they're afraid they'll there are uh, you no know, new ideas. copy there and things are like no that. New ideas. It's just I your mean, take on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never really had that issue. Of course, I'm a pantser, so right. You know, I, I <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. I actually was reading, um, what was it? I was reading something about cancer and I don't think it was your conversation last week with, um, RJ Keller, but I was reading, I was listening or reading to some, uh, to something and it was talking about being a cancer and how it would be boring to plot things out for this cancer. Um, because that they, that's how, I mean, they're, once they've plotted it to them, the story's told. So they don't, you know, they don't get that creative, that doesn't get their creative juices flowing. So, you know, I can see maybe if you're, you know, if you literally are reading a story and then you sit down and plot, like go plot by plot by plot point, but I don't know. But even if you're not reading in your specific genre, find a sister genre that, 
you know, you like, and, you know, that has a similar steam level and, you know, find out kind of how that's working and stuff. Yeah. So why don't we dive into your excerpt? <laughs> Ms. Bannister? Okay. So if anybody is listening or watching at work or has littles around, now might be a good idea to plug in some headphones. And this is where we find out if we're going to get blocked for content. Yes, you have been warned. Neither one of our excerpts are are uh, PG-13 or G-rated at all. for work, right. So, yeah, not safe uh, to work. Right, been right. Warned. So this happens in my upcoming uh, release, Where You Left Me, uh, Volume 1. Uh, this is coming out in on February 8th. And the general, just, just so that we're all on the same page of what's happening, uh, she has been left at the altar, and instead of uh, pouting and moaning, she decides to get a volunteer from the waiting audience to marry and go on her honeymoon to the Bahamas with. He just happens to be a really cute, hot guy. I mean, you know, what is her, you know, the, the odds of that? She'll go with it, right? So they've had their, their wedding at this point. They've had the reception. They're in the limo now on their way to the honeymoon suite. <laughs> Okay, and during this sort of time, sexual tension has been mounting and they're definitely feeling attracted to each other. They've had some some steamy tension going on. And so now they're in the limo ride leading up to the honeymoon night. Okay, so it's settled then. We're going on a cruise together, trapped on a boat, miles from shore for five days. Jasmine is my character who's saying this. Looks like, he smiled. And you're sure you have everything that you need? We could ask the driver to... He took my hand and brought it to his lips. I have everything I need right here. Swoon! And your job will let you up and leave. Without warning like this, I I don't want you to get in trouble. It'll be fine. I'll make a few calls before we leave. Don't stress about that. Stress... More about how painfully long this car ride is going to be, he said, using his other hand to shift the sudden tenting of his pants. Sweet Jesus. Um, that looks painful, I whispered. My eyes darted quickly to the front where the driver was pulling up to a red light. The partition was down, so one glance in the rear view mirror, and he'd totally see what Sean was complaining about. To try and help shield him from embarrassment, I picked up the edge of my dress and draped it over his lap to hide the show. You should probably tend to that, I said softly, curious to see if he'd whip it out. That was something Dwayne would never do, not in a million years. But this guy, he seemed wild enough to go for it. My heart started to thump in my chest at the possibility of a show. Sean looked over at me and raised an eyebrow. His eyes flicked to the driver as if he understood my motive. Sean's hand went down to the top button and undid it. Dare me, he whispered. Holy shit, he was serious. The idea of him exposing himself while the driver was literally feet away titillated me in a way that I hadn't expected. My mouth watered at the idea of seeing him. He watched my eyes carefully for permission. I looked once at the driver who was focused on the road, then back at Sean and nodded at him to continue. His fingers went to the zipper as my heart hammered in my chest. I'd never seen anything quite so hot in my life. While the tool blocked the driver's vision from the show, it certainly didn't impede mine. How much longer till we arrive? I asked the driver, my mouth dry. My eyes never left Sean's fingers as he, as the zipper lowered painfully slow. At least another 10 minutes is a bit of traffic. I nodded and went to reach for the button to close the partition, but Sean shook his head once. My heart was beating in triple time now as the zipper came to a stop. A moment later, and Sean was out in all his glory. I felt my mouth drop open. He smiled, but pressed a finger to his lips. I had to remain quiet if I wanted to finish the show. I could feel myself getting wet just looking at his engorged cock. When his hand wrapped around himself, I heard the sudden uptake of air and I had to look away for fear that the driver would have checked to investigate the noise. Clearing my throat, throat) I asked the driver to turn on some music. 
He obliged without objection as I allowed my eyes to drift back over to Sean, who was still working himself up into a frenzy. His lips parted slightly, his brows pulled together as if lost in the feeling. And I found myself incredibly jealous. There was no way I was gonna be able to get a release like that, not in this dress, there was way too much in the way, which only made watching Sean that much hotter. It was like he was teasing me about the pleasures to come later tonight. I felt my teeth biting the edge of my lip as my hand itched to join in to his fun. My fingers inched their way over to him as he stroked himself up and down. I was so transfixed on his actions that when he stopped and took his hand off his erection, I had to look up, worried that we'd been caught. But the driver was still looking straight ahead. Glancing back at Sean, I saw him nod once toward his gawk. Damn, he knew I wanted to touch him. Swallowing hard, I scooted over slightly and reached my hand out to wrap my hand over his warm length, marveling at how hard he was. I stroked him a few times, trying not to moan myself when his hand wrapped around mine, guiding me to the release that he was the sole expert at. It only took a few more pumps with his hand pressed around mine to trigger his orgasm. His eyes closed as his head rolled back, his, tip, his hips lifting off the seat, the tip of his cock escaping the tool for a fraction of a second before his seed ran down my hand, warm and silky. Holy shit, that was hot. Good timing. We're almost there, the driver said with a smirk before he closed the partition for us. Whoops. <laughs> and that's my little exit. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I mean, you want to talk about some foreplay? That was pretty hot foreplay. Mm. That's some foreplay. And it's not, you know, the in and out, in and out sort of sex. So you can have those moments that that yeah. happen. Now there's something that 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 happened in in my passage but i think is better illustrated in your passage um is is the concept of uh consent now before we yes. dive into your excerpt that mm -hmm. seems the scene that i just read if if sean had not sort of looked over and said dared me and waited for her to sort of nod in approval that would be a very different scene it would be a stranger taking himself out and masturbating in front mm -hmm. of somebody without consent that would be a very different creepy it'd be very awkward first of all at very least yeah it would, <laughs> at it the would very least it wouldn't be hot at all so the consent no. part of her agreeing that mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah i'm down with this is i think what mm -hmm. makes uh, allows it to be hot for the reader so the consent I think, is important there yeah i think it's it's a very um it's a very interesting conundrum for uh for romance writers and for writers of sex scenes because you do want to include the consent part of it, but you don't want it to be like, is it okay if I touch your shoulder? You don't yes. want to take is the it okay or the if desire I... away? Yeah, right. Right. You you don't want to lose the mood right. by by adding in the consent, but you also want to make it very clear to uh, anyone who's reading it yeah. that the character, both characters that are, are involved board. or the yeah. characters that are on board with what exactly is going on and are enthusiastically okay with it. Yeah. Um, and there's no better <laughs> example of this than in BDSM because yeah. one of the hallmarks of a healthy BDSM relationship is communication and yeah. trust. Mm -hmm. Those two things, a healthy BDSM relationship cannot happen without communication and trust. It doesn't matter if you are brand new in the lifestyle or if you have been married for 20 years, there has to be a level of communication and trust there. And the communication and trust is, cons is part of consent. I mean, it could probably be argued that there is more communication in a BDSM relationship than, you know, a non-BDSM Really. A healthy one. I, right, I qualify right. that yes. as a healthy yes, BDSM relationship because there yes. are, there are, I have sure. read, um, <laughs> sure that, uh, yes, <laughs> I have read a few that have not yeah. been what I would qualify as that's, that would be BDSM abuse at relationships. that point. That would probably be abuse at that yes. point. Or where the, or where the consent is um, so gray mm. that it becomes concerning. Mm. Um, 
I, I read a story once that it was a BDSM story, very, very popular author. And the, the heroine breaks, she's at a club uh, by chance. She's not really there by choice. Things happen. I don't want to go into too many details right. because it'll give away who it is and what right. story it is, but she's there uh, because she has to be, she doesn't have a choice. So she's just kind of hanging out there, with it. but she breaks a rule, a rule that she doesn't know exists. Mm -hmm. And she breaks a rule and she gets punished for breaking that rule. Right. To me, in my mind, that is not consensual no. and in right. line with a healthy BDSM right. arrangement or relationship. Right. So again, consent is very important and it is your job as a romance author to make that hot. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. So that's why I'm so curious to see what your excerpt is, because you've told me that this is a good example of writing in consent in a, in a hot it way. It is. <laughs> okay. So to I kind of set this up as yes, well, yes. you did. Yes. Okay. To set this up, this is also for my upcoming release. Uh, Danielle's release is happening in, oh, what? A couple oh, weeks it's, now. It's, yeah. It, yeah. Well, this, it's, will well, air, it, this will air on right. Monday. So it will right. be It'll like, be It'll be this week yeah, when this yeah. is released, when this podcast goes live, it will be this, it'll be that week um, when it's released. Mine is not getting released until April. My edits literally just right. came back this morning. <laughs> so I haven't even looked at all the red marks that my, uh, my. You've got uh, time to do that. You've got editor. time. I have some time. You have time. That's good. Um, but in this story, and um, it's called His Forbidden Kiss. It is a brother's best friend romance so a little forbidden, forbidden love a little forbidden love yes and um to kind of set this up this scene up these two have been have been crushing on each other for 17 years and she has uh she's seen him at a bdsm club mm -hmm. finds out that he is a dom and she's recently interested in the lifestyle and exploring the lifestyle so she decides to show up on his doorstep. What better teacher than somebody and, that you know and respect? And have had the so hot scary. score for 17 right. years. You know, and, makes sense to and, me. And convinces him to uh, play with her. Mm -hmm. um, so keep in mind, she has no, she has no reference before this uh of ever having kinky sex before so this is all this should be fun her. this, should be, this fun. should be fun i'm buckled in okay you're buckled in okay the rough material of his jeans brushed against her abused backside making it impossible to forget that she'd been spanked moments before like a misbehaving child it should have made her furious to be treated like that she was a grown woman and a successful one at that None of this should be appealing to her on any level. So why was it that her entire body felt as if it were more alive than it ever had been? All thoughts, all thoughts fled as Justin lowered his mouth to her breast and began sucking it into his mouth. He swirled his tongue around her nipple before scraping his teeth along the moist flesh. When he began to pull back, she instinctively reached to hold him in place. Justin wasn't having that, however. He took hold of both her wrists, placed them on the bed above her head, and held them there. I want to touch you, she said through her labored breathing. No, Justin mumbled around the breast he was currently playing, paying homage to. She opened her mouth to protest, and he bit down on her nipple. Ouch! He chuckled and met her gaze. Have you changed your mind? Do you want me to stop, let you get dressed and send you on your way? Of course she didn't want that. Was he joking? Kim shook her head. No, sir, I don't want to go home. With her answer, he took her other nipple between his teeth, worried it until it was almost painful and then released it. She felt it all the way down to her pussy. It was as if all the nerve endings in her body were connected to the space between her legs. That had never happened before. Cool air fanned over her damp breast, causing goosebumps. 
Then he switched sides, sucking her other nipple into his mouth, licking around her areola, and then working it between his teeth before releasing it and blowing on it. She felt cold and hot at the same time. Kim could honestly say that foreplay had never been like this before. Most guys would have dived in as soon as they realized she was wet and ready, not Justin. He seemed content to take his time and explore her body. Maybe it was because they were only giving themselves this one night. Maybe that was what made the difference. He shifted his hold on her wrists, freeing one of his hands. I'm going to make you feel good tonight, Kim. How many times would you like to come? What? She'd been lost in her thoughts and the feel of his mouth as he peppered kisses on her chest and collarbone. She felt his lips curl up into a smile against her skin. I asked you how many times you wished to come tonight. Justin punctuated his statement by tra tracing a line up her collarbone to the curve of her neck with his tongue. I thought that wasn't my decision. It was difficult to concentrate with his lips so close to her neck. Oh, it's not, but I still want to hear your answer. He drew some of her flesh into his mouth and began sucking on it gently. Was he going to give her a hickey? Normally, that would annoy the hell out of her, but she found she didn't care. It was hard to concentrate while he was doing that, but she tried to focus. How many should she say? The most she'd ever had during a sexual encounter was two, and that was only because the guy had gone down on her first. Usually, one was a stretch for her. Then again, this was Justin, and if he hadn't stopped earlier, she would have come. He released the skin he'd been sucking on and ran the tip of his nose up to the base of her ear. I'm waiting. Two? Justin whispered in her ear. Try again. She swallowed. How many should she say? Four? Oh my goodness. I lay these. I can't hear. Lifting his head. He met her gaze and shot her a mischievous grin. I think five sounds like a nice round number, don't you? Five, she said. Never had she experienced five orgasms in one night, not even when she'd helped herself. He chuckled at her expression. Are you doubting my abilities, Miss Langley? While he was talking, his free hand needed her breast. Kim had to keep reminding herself that she wasn't dreaming this. She was really here with Justin's hands and lips on her. And hopefully by the end of the night, she'd know what it felt like to have him inside her as well. I've never had five before, she swallowed. In one night, I mean. Why did she feel shy admitting something like that to him? She was spread out naked across his lap for crying out loud. There's a first time for everything. <laughs> that is how you write consent exactly i mean it's it's sexy but and it doesn't take you out of the moment but it's very clear he makes it very very clear for her this is what i want this is what i'm agreeing to and it's still sexy it's still hot yeah so yeah and, it's, and, it's, and they're each they're they're each still in control of stuff and they can each stop if they feel comfortable mm -hmm. i mean that's that to me makes, you know, scenes like that really hot is that is that both parties are definitely invested in in the journey and are are connected um, in both participating in. in the right. If, if they're <laughs> yeah, they're both. Yeah, they're both participating. But again, it goes it really does go back to that communication thing, whether you're talking about just general sex or you're talking about BDSM sex. Okay. If you're not communicating with your partner about, you know, what's okay and what's not, what you like, what you don't like, then the consent's not there. Even if you don't actually voice it, the consent's not there. Yeah, yeah it's and true. I've had people tell me enthusiastic consent. I mean, you can, in this particular scene, he, you know, he point blank asks her, are you okay with this? Or do you want me to stop? 
we can stop, call it a night, it's done, whatever. And again, before this, before the scene, I mean, she has agreed to do this. I mean, she's thinks, but he gives her an out. He says, you know, are you sure? Have you changed your mind or are we continuing? And then, you know, going into more detail, but he's, but it is, I mean, he's made it where it's still hot. Right. I mean, it's, do you find but that it's important a, a challenging thing to write in sex scene is, is, is that what I, I get asked a lot like what are what are the hardest parts about hardest parts <laughs> hardest parts about writing uh, a sex scene um and you know I guess the obvious answer would probably be you know keeping track of arms and limbs yeah and coordination and like of that parts because you do lose position where you know what move are they on what Oh, positions body parts yeah. what's in what hole right exactly that gets tricky but aside sort of from that physicality thing is there anything that you find particularly challenging to write in a sex scene or does it all just oh. flow freely for you I would say the core, I mean, the coordination would obviously be the hardest part of a sex scene, making sure all body parts and keeping track of what it is where and <laughs> how, again, especially in a BDSM scene, because you're not always just dealing with body parts. Sometimes you're dealing with handcuffs or, toys you know, or uh, yeah, or toys or, you know, it's hard to say what you're doing. Nipple, nipple clamps. I mean, if, you know, you can't, you know, you can't write a scene and, you know, in one, you know, one minute there's nipple clamps on and then the next minute they're, you know, Off or whatever. Yeah, they're, mm -hmm. well, maybe they're, maybe they climax and then it's done and then the nipple clamps just suddenly disappear, have disappeared. It's like, no, <laughs> what, you, what happened to them? They didn't yeah. just go poof. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So keeping track of that kind of stuff. As far as adding in that kind of things, um. I would say probably for me, not really just because I am a pantser and everything for me does revolve around the characters and the evolution of their uh, relationship and their character development in general. Yeah. So when I'm writing a sex scene, who they are as a character is very, very forefront in my mind. Um, what they particularly like, what they don't. Um, and that kind of determines for me how their interactions go and what they're going to things. But again, I, I mean, I guess it probably is a little challenging, but it's not, I don't think it's definitely not the hardest thing. What about for you? Do you find it challenging? Um, not so much yet, but I've only really sort of started writing these steamy. sorts of books, steamy these books, spicy. Re fairly recently. I think 2018 was when I wrote my first one. I didn't really dare write them prior to that because I'm like, my God, my mom reads my books. I can't, I can't write that kind of stuff. But then I sort of got over myself and said, yes, I can, I can, and she can just choose not to read them, and it's fine. And you know, my family members, she can might not surprise to read you. And, you know, she reads everything, but you know, it's embarrassing for me that she's mm -hmm. reading it. But I have to sort of mm -hmm. get get family members reading this out of my mind it's not you know there are you're not people, writing it for them right, right. They, that's not the, necessarily the audience that I'm going for I write other things that they might enjoy um so I think maybe sometimes uh the tricky parts can sometimes be you know trying not to be repetitive and staying fresh mm. and making sure that you're not, you know, describing a sex scene in the same way and that, you know, yeah, I would say the repetitive. Yeah. 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 That, that is true. The repetitive nature that, that yeah, that, that, that is, is probably the second hardest out of uh, between the body parts. I mean, that does kind of go in line with body parts because yeah. obviously right. the body parts are actually doing something right. They are. And, and they that's are. what you think. And it is those action words that yeah. tend to be the most repeat. Well, the action words and the body part words, yeah. because I find myself, especially with hands, I, I try, find myself going, okay. Um, hand, palm, finger, <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, there's always how, so many words for some things and you use them a lot for the during things. a sex scene. Yeah, like, during a yeah. sex scene. So it's like, you know, and and finding action words. I mean, I I've, you know, you know, you you run your hands down 
the side of, you know, her body or yeah. you, you know, you snake your fingers, yeah. you know, between yeah. her legs, you know, and I mean, yeah, there's also the, you know, the words for, you know, individual body parts and stuff. And sure, mm-hmm. there are lots of different body parts that are, you know, sort of comical and stuff that you could, you know, call a penis and things like that. But you have to be careful with those word choices, because if you make that word choice and it takes you out of the moment, because it's like, who calls it that? You've taken right. that person out of the moment. So yeah. sometimes it's, you have to use a repetitive phrase because you want to make sure to keep that person in the moment. Well, and again, you also have to be true to the character you're writing because for example, in my Finding Anna series, my heroine has gone through serious trauma, sexual trauma. So when she refers to body parts, she is very clinical. Even if it's in a sex scene, she's, you know, it's his penis. It's not his cock. It's, right. it's, it's his penis. And, and that's just, but it that's might not how be she his, approaches you know, it. Long duck dong, you know, it might not be exactly something. Yeah, it, it, you know, I, I, unless like you're that. writing in a romantic comedy, please right. don't call it a dong. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not okay. at least not in a sex scene. It's Cause just, it ain't, it's, it's no, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You know, we've we've been talking about sex now for about uh, 45 minutes. Do you I know. That? When we decided to start talking about this, what are we going to have enough stuff to talk about? I Apparently, yeah. we have a plethora of stuff to talk about. Yes, I was going to say, I don't I I don't think there's a lack of things to talk about when it comes to sex. Sex sells, right? It does. It does sell. Um for sure. <laughs> no denying so, it. So why we both write it, right? <laughs> we got to pay the bills, right? We got to pay the bills. And it's fun. I mean, it's 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 not, yeah. it, it's a fun thing to write. So it's not like we're, oh, I got to write another sex book so I can, you know, they're fun. They're, they're escapism. They're, they're a way to sort of remove yourself yeah. from the, the stress of everyday life. And what better way to be whisked off to this romance where all of your sexual needs are being met. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sign I me mean, up. and the connection and part of the things I love about, even though I do tend to write explicit sex scenes, I, I, I don't really have a whole lot of stuff that leans more towards the emotional. Some of my contemporary romances do lean more that well, but they still, I would say, lean into the spicy more than the steamy. And, but it is the connection that you get where the culmination of the emotions and the growing feelings the characters are having towards each other, that they just, it's like that moment. And I love writing that buildup. And I love writing that moment where they really do get to come together in a very physical way, especially for the first time. That is, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's like, it, 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 for me, it draws up in there from, you know, like the first meeting at the first kiss sure. and the first sexual encounter are all to me, very, very important mm-hmm. moments in the evolution of a character relationship when a romance. Sure. So. And, and I think that's sometimes a misconception that, you know, sometimes writers are just writing sex scenes because sex sells and you're just throwing in a sex scene that doesn't need to she be You can there. tell that. I have, I have read stories like that and you can tell when it's just being inserted just for the heck of it, right? Because, and, and you can tell that very easily because in my opinion, again, my opinion, uh, (laughs) but you should not be able to just remove a sex scene from a story and have it not matter. Exactly. Yeah. Because again, it should do something to propel the story forward. Yeah. Yeah. It should solidify the relationship, yeah. the feelings. It Absolutely. should move the relationship forward in some way, shape, or form. And you know, and if it doesn't, then why are you? Why do you have it there? And that's a, that's a good test. If you're writing and you go, you know what? Let me just highlight this passage. Can I read this scene without the sex scene here? Does anything change? Are the stakes raised? Is there is there dynamic change mm-hmm. at all? And if the answer is no, you don't need that scene. 
That scene can right. go away. It's not serving you. I feel the same way about yeah. fight scenes. In yeah, I was going to say it, it. It actually qualifies for any scene. It doesn't just yeah. it just qualify for sex. It, it, it fights scene, an argument, somebody going someplace. Yeah. What does it do? If and it now, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it can be as simple as it establishes this character, like having the character go to work. You seeing the character go to work and do their job, you can yep. be like, oh, I don't really need that. It nothing really happens. But the point of it, it may not be some explosive thing that happens, but maybe you're just establishing that character profile. Yep. And this so it the, does this have is the a norm point. for them. And so, yes, right. absolutely. It's the point. This is the status quo before everything goes to hell. So that's right. the point. It needs to be there. Right. Right. But yep. you but yeah, every scene that you write should really have a purpose in your story. Otherwise, it shouldn't just be there as filler. It yeah. should have a purpose, even if the purpose is to show that this is normal. And then this is this is, you know, this later down the line is going to completely yep. throw a wrench in the works and everything's going to go dull. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Well, that was our oh, last question oh. for the day. We got through it all. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, we, we made it another an hour. Woo-hoo. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. All right. Well, um, it was a great conversation. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as Danielle and I did. We had a lot of fun. And I hope you will tune in next time and uh, see what else we're going to talk about. Until then, bye. Bye. Wait. Before you go, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check us out on our website, foundbybookspodcast.com.